Okay. Uh, just taught a Skype lesson on bugging the taters. Bugging the taters. You should get familiar with the sound of this tune. Um, listen to it on YouTube. Listen to Al Hopkins and the Buckle Busters. Play it. Um, it's an old Tennessee tune. This recording was from like the 20, 1927 to 28, somewhere in there. And it's a D tune. So we're playing it in double D on the fiddle. And the two sets, uh, 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 the two Ds that you have are your fourth string and your second string. Be better if I was actually in tune. And then you've also got two A's in this tuning. You have your, your middle string and you have your fifth string. And then you have your first string is an E. And remember that this is sort of your home place, so that makes a one chord. So this tune has no fours, no G chords in it. It's got Ds and As. But it has them in some unusual places. So, I mean places on the fingerboard, not that unusual really, but. So here's a one. We're also gonna use a different one chord. We're gonna use the one up here. Because you're gonna need your pinky up here for that. So to make that one chord, fifth fret with your ring finger, and then fourth fret with your index finger, fifth fret with your middle finger on the third string. Keep your pinky handy, you need it. And then, uh, have an unusual, uh, an, an unusual five chord too. We're gonna put our ring finger on the fifth fret and stretch our index finger all the way down to the second fret of the second string. And then keep this one handy because we're gonna want that too. And it's, your middle finger is gonna go right here. go right there at the third string at the fourth fret which is a very this is a note that appears all the time when you have a five chord on the banjo this note kind of goes with it okay so you've listened to it online a few times so that you kind of feel like you've got a little handle on how it goes it's kind of swingy isn't it and it's got four parts um, let's just, let me just, uh, remind myself how this all goes. Play a little bit. Okay, so let's just do, let's play this first part. There's a million different ways you could play this, but let's just settle on something. Let's do that. Let's just go. Bum, bum, drop, bum, pull off. Let's start with that again. same place you just pulled off. So that sounds like this. One 
more time. Next line. Yep. And this time, instead of ham run diddy bum, we're gonna go ham run diddy bum. So bum bum drop bum pull up ham run diddy bum diddy bum bum drop bum pull up ham. Michael, I think that's slightly different than the way I showed you, but I kind of like this better, so just you have, your, you have options now. So that's the first part. That's all there is to it. You just play that, that the whole thing twice. Um, then you have the lower part. So... And you play that twice. So let's just work on that. Um, you can you can avoid you can not play always put your finger here you can leave it here all the time if you want except that then you can't get down to here so what you want to avoid do what we want, we want to do is avoid playing all your strings when you're playing a ditty because you're going to have that and you, that is your one that's not your one really so but you can you can you can just avoid your first string so try to avoid your first string then. Um, so here's the second part. So I did a hammer on the third fret, diddy, and then I'm gonna hit the third fret, but hammer on the fourth fret. I mean, hit the third string, th third string. So that's hammer on diddy, hammer on diddy. So it's a little counterintuitive to hit one string and hammer on another, but you have to get used to it because it happens a lot. So that's what you're doing here. You're hitting the third string and hammering it on, and then you're hitting the third string again, but hammering on the fourth string. And then do the third string and again. And then I would bring my finger back to do a whole bum beat. So. Again, hammer on diddy, boom, hammer on diddy, hammer on diddy, and then we're gonna go. That's a nice slide, uh, not too fast, but uh, on the fourth string from the second to the fourth fret. Hammer on, I mean, slide and diddy. So you you could play it simple, simple, or you could play it going with the fiddle a little bit more, which is what I do, which is a little bit syncopated. your foot there or playing with a against a metronome or a straw machine or something and so you're going bomb bomb or you can just listen to the sound of it and try to match it That's what you're going to do first. Bum, did, uh, did and then, right after you do that, so that's pull off, hit your 
second second string. Sorry. That's your third string, second fret. And then third string open. So that whole line goes. first half. So you want you want this. This one's not playing yet because I have a hard time putting them all down at once just because it's such a reach for me. I have short little fingers. So I just leave this one up during that but one of these whole things twice. Um, okay, now this part, which is easy and fun, as long as you remember how to make that chord. chord kind of arpeggiated strum there so so breaking this down a little bit So that's bomb, bomb, drop, bomb, diddy, bomb, 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 diddy, and then bomb, bomb, drop, bomb, diddy, drop, bomb. That's so just open first and second. Drop, thumb, bomb, and then second string open. Bugging the taters. Sorry, I was so out of tune by the end. 
my first string needs to come down a little bit. But um, do listen to it, and uh, I think you'll be able to get it from that. I hope so. Let me know if you don't.